Yo, control freaks, what's up? In today's video, I'll give you a crash course in CliffHex Pro. We'll lay out an overview map so I can't get too much into the details. I'll focus mainly on how you get things going rather than what you can do. Because CliffHex is so damn powerful, showing everything it could do would take days. Instead, I decided to keep this video as compact as possible, so let's go. My name is Schlappe and let's talk about CliffHex Pro. CliffX Pro is an extension for Ableton. It's based on two elements, triggers and actions. With actions, you could do stuff in Ableton like arming a track, creating a clip, starting a clip, deleting a clip, duplicating a clip, yada, yada, yada. And those actions are triggered by an event like launching a clip or pressing a button on a MIDI controller. And those actions are short pieces of text and they're all written in the manual. The way actions are sorted in the reference is related to what part of Ableton they apply to. Let's pick a global action. They apply to the uppermost hierarchy of Ableton, for example, asterisk fix. That will record a fixed number of bars on all ARM tracks, formally exclusive to Ableton push. Now that we have an action, we need a trigger. Let's use a clip. It can be MIDI or audio clip, empty or with content, it does not matter. The gateway is the name of the clip. Just start with the square brackets to turn the name of the clip into a CliffX Pro action, which will be executed when the clip is launched. SREC Fix 4 will record four bars on the armed track. Talking of tracks, there are track actions, for example, to arm a specific track, and you can either refer to a track by its position or by its name, either using numbers or quotes. You can do a couple of actions at once. That is called an action list. Each action is separated by a semicolon. So this action list will turn on the arm on the bass track, start recording for four bars and wait four bars until the last action is executed, which then will turn off the arm on the bass track. You can use different types of triggers, like a marker in the arrangement view, a C name, a button on the MIDI controller, or a button on a tablet or phone. You have a vast catalog of actions. Just go ahead and try out all these actions. It is really the fun part. Let's have a look at X controls using any MIDI controller to trigger CliffX Pro actions. There is a TXT file in your native control CliffX Pro folder in your users directory. Go there, open it, give your baby a name, type in the MIDI channel and type two other values and lastly your action or action list. Reload your Ableton set and you have a customized MIDI controller ready to go. You can set up six different controllers individually. Just activate them under control surfaces in the preferences and get an individual folder for their configuration. OSC is a protocol for communication between devices over local networks similar to MIDI. And you can use that as trigger to CliffX Pro as well. There are different apps like TouchOC, Lima, or Open Stage Control. Like here, a button is sending an on-off message to the address Metro. Go into the text file XOSC and the same folder as your X control and define the action. Bindings are basically the same as MIDI mappings. It is already built in in life, so why should I care, you might ask. Unlike the built-in mapping, bindings can be dynamically remapped with CliffX Pro. It is an extension which you have to pay extra for, but you won't regret it. How do you do it? Just like Xcontrols, there's a text file, encoder bindings, where you define a controller name, link it to the MIDI message and the element of Ableton you'd like to control. Then you can remap it with the bind action. CliffX Pro can put out the bound parameters and values via OSC, so you get a perfect what you see is what you get controller. It is tricky to set up though, but that's for another video. Editing, copying and pasting long action lists sucks, to be honest. And if you have to change something at one place, you'll have to double check that it's changed at all other places as well. This can be cumbersome and super annoying. But CliffX Pro got you covered. Store and edit long action list you use regularly in a text file as a macro and call it from anywhere. Go to your CliffX folder, open up macros.txt and define your macro like this. Dollar sign, macro name, dollar sign, equal, action, 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 action. Make sure when you go over multiple lines that the new line starts with the white space at the beginning. In CliffX, you also can use variables as placeholders in action list by framing the name in percentage signs. That combined with macros is super powerful and very flexible. 
With X mode, you can have multiple layers for the same button, like a multi shift mode. First, download the Xmode user action file on the forum and put it in your remote script user action folder. Define the actions for Xmodes in macros.txt like this. The macro name has to be $B followed by a number $. Thirdly, now you can change your layer with the Xmode action. And lastly, define the next control to call the macro B1 and some buttons for changing the Xmode like this. I have a launchpad with numbers 1 to 8 representing loop tricks. Now I use buttons to switch the X mode to mute, arm, play, stop, fade in and out those tracks. It gets even cooler if you add timing to the source. Different actions for short and long press. Timed X controls then become G controls, which means you have another TXC file. But the syntax is basically the same. You define it just like an X control. And then you have options for triggering different action lists for each event. Pressed, released, long press, immediately released and released after a long press. You can combine those with X modes and that will fry your brain easily. Snapshots are probably the most popular feature of CliffX Pro. Use an XClip, write the name of your snapshot into the square brackets and give the snapshot a name and then use the snap actions to store whatever values you need to catch reaching from mixer settings over device settings or both. Recall the settings with the recall action and morph smoothly with the ramping modifier or even use a macrobat rack to morph seamlessly. Talking of racks, you can literally play CliffX Pro like an instrument. The drum rack device to do this is sort of hidden away in one of the lessons. Go to that lesson, open the live set and save the rack to your user library and you're good to go. Write your actions into a drum rack and trigger your actions from a MIDI clip. This is very convenient because finally long action lists are better readable and synced up perfectly to your live set. In regarding to live looping, that was a real game changer for me. User actions, the final frontier. Is there anything CliffX can't do right out of the box? Get yourself into trouble and start to code your own actions. I did it and never looked back. This is a lot easier than you think, but more time consuming as you hope for. But we got ChatGPT as a helping hand to write Python code for us. So how to get started is for another video though. So that was it. I hope that gave you an idea how incredibly powerful CliffX Pro is and that it's actually not that hard to get started. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you would like to see in a future video. And until then, Stay happy, stay healthy, and always stay in control.